Hello you cum flavoured Capri Suns, Jim Sterling here and this is Undertale. Now this is a game I have already beaten once before, uh, this is my second playthrough of the game. Uh, I do believe things change on a second playthrough, but anyway, the point is, is that this is a game I reviewed on thegymquisition.com and gave a 10 out of 10 to. Uh, some people say I only do shit on this channel, but this is a legitimate game of the year contender. In fact, it's the only game that I'm willing to say is guaranteed to be in the Gymquisition's top 10 games, well I do top five best games, to be in the top five best games this year along with Bloodborne. Those two are money in the bank, uh, so let's give it a little play, shall we? So, as you can see, it's very traditional RPG-ish. So, this is actually reacting to my last playthrough. This is a game in which you can avoid killing anyone. Uh, if you if you don't want to kill ev uh, anyone, you can find a way around it. Um, I accidentally killed one individual on my last playthrough, and that's what this is reacting to. I didn't go fully genocidal. There are pacifist runs, genocidal runs. Uh, on my last playthrough, I, I did accidentally kill one person. <laughs> uh, so here we have the flower telling us, this time don't kill anyone. So there we go. I actually wanted to do a um, fully genocidal run because I heard it makes the game very different. But I'm torn now because I did accidentally kill someone the first time. So it's it's weird. But anyway, here we are. This is uh, a character, Toriel, just sort of telling us what's going on. The, the story is, you're a kid, you fell down a hole uh, into an underworld full of monsters where the monsters retreated after a war with humans. So we're the first human to come there in a long time. Do my best to protect you during your time here. Come, I shall guide you through the catacombs. So... Already the game is different from when I last played it, uh, which which I find fantastic. The game really, I mean, it gives Psycho Mantis from Metal Gear Solid and Scarecrow from Arkham Asylum like a real run for their money when it comes to screwing with uh, the fourth wall, player interfaces, expectations. It's an incredible experience, really. Shadow of the Ruins looms above, filling you with determination. There we go, file saved. So, very simple puzzles. There, I don't know why I'm not talking as if there's dialogue that I've got to um, that I'm I've got to not talk over because it's all text and noise. So anyway, you got to solve puzzles to move from room to room. Uh, it's really not that big a deal. It's not a puzzle game per se. So we're just flipping switches and stuff. Bloop. There we go, simple enough. Look. I'm proud of you, little one. Let us move to the next room. So there we are. There's a lot of preamble here. Uh, this one I also accidentally killed, I think. And it did actually have effects later on. You can strike up a friendly conversation. Stall for time. I'll come to resolve the conflict. Practice talking to the dummy. Yeah, because I didn't know what I was doing here at this point. Uh, so I did just go for general attacks. I killed the dummy. And later on in the game, that actually had repercussions. That's how brilliant this game is. So anyway, here's a, an example of the combat system. Um, this game's been out for a while. I did the review first. Uh, but I did want to finally get around to doing a video just because I, I feel like this game needs all the attention in the fucking world. So you can just fight... Uh, that will do a simple attack with a kind of QTE thing that will measure critical hits. But if you act, you can check the dummy. Tells you it's attack and defense, a cotton heart and a button eye. You are the apple of my eye. Dummy stands around absent-mindedly. Well, talk. You talk to the dummy. It doesn't seem much of a conversation. Toriel seems happy with you. You won! So that's a very simple example. It obviously gets a lot more complex when you get to real fights. Which we will be getting to in a bit. So Toriel told us there are more complex puzzles are coming. Oh, here we go. Here's a real fight. Frog it attacks you. So, could go to attack it. Frog it. Check. Life is difficult for this enemy. Here's Toriel. She's told it to fuck off. 
I forgot that while she's with us, the fight, you don't really get to see the battle system in its totality yet. This is a puzzle, but here, take my hand for a moment. So, they're just leading us across. At the moment, you might not see what the big deal with the game is. Like, it does take playing through it a lot to really see it. Um, I mean, right now, though, you might be just seeing, you know, a rather charming little RPG thing, which, which is good enough. If that's all it was, that would be uh, pretty damn good. So she's challenged us to walk across the room all on our own. It does things like this, just very charming silliness. Like there's nothing dangerous here at all. But it, it does. It's one of those games that knows it's a game and plays with that fact. But it's not on the nose about it like Matt Hazard or The Simpsons game was. It doesn't run the risk of just being the thing it parodies. It actually does just playfully toy with, with uh, video game convention. Test our independence. I must attend to some business and you must stay alone for a while. Please remain here. It's dangerous to explore by yourself. They'll give us a cell phone and we'll call if we need anything. Obviously we're not going to stay here. We, we, we're going to fuck off. So here we are. We're, we're on our own now. But we will get called. This is Toriel. You have not left the room, have you? There are a few puzzles ahead that I have yet to explain. It would be dangerous to try and solve them yourself. Be good, alright? Click. I'm going to have some advice about battling monsters. If you act a certain way or fight until you almost defeat them, they might not want to battle you anymore. If a monster does not want to fight you, please show some mercy. So, get ourselves saved again. I mean, I've, I've seen people tell me they've played... Like, the game takes about, you know, I want to say five or six hours to go through the first time around. A uh, little more, a little less, depending. Um, but there are people who have told me, like, they're, they're, they're 11 hours deep replaying and still discovering all sorts of new things. I'll take a piece of candy. I'm never dared to take more than one. I don't know if that's possible. Right, so a real fight. Frog it, hop close. Frog it, check. Life is difficult for this enemy. Now you get to see an attack. So this is this is the, the gist of battle is, and obviously it gets more and more complex as the game goes on to the point where there's some real bullet hell uh, sequences. Um, but it is all about sort of avoiding. You use that little heart and you avoid attacks as they come in. So we'll compliment the frog. Frog it didn't understand what you said but was flattered anyway. Blushes deeply. This is a simple one to avoid, doesn't get very high. And now its name is in yellow, so we can spare it. You won! Now you earn no XP for uh, sparing, you do get the gold. So of course, it, it makes for a rather interesting gameplay um, issue, balancing issue, where you can spare, but it will be harder. Like I say, I mean, I. I've wanted to go for a pacifist run, but I've never seen what happens when you go fully genocidal. But I'm going to go mostly pacifist. She's asking us about butterscotch here. I'm skipping through some of the story stuff here just because... Uh, mainly because I want people to play this for themselves. Like, I, I really am being a little bit more evangelical about this game than I normally am. About games. Just because I do feel it deserves attention. So here's Wimson. Act. It's already yellow. We could already spare it. But we'll console it. Halfway through your first word, Wimson bursts into tears and runs away. We won! For calling us again. This, this is one of the few little tiny uh, annoyances I have with the game. Is Some things run on a little too long, joke-wise. Getting calls on your cell phone is one of them where the game interrupts you. Here we're being asked about allergies. You know, we, we get this sort of doting mother figure vibe from Toriel, and it goes on for a little bit, but... So this is a puzzle here. We've got to avoid the leafy pattern. That's what that sign says. It says, don't tread on the leaves. So we've got to try and match up the leaves. Mold's meal. It's already yellow again, but we'll imitate it. You lie immobile with Mold's meal. You feel like you understand the world a little better. 
you know, this is, as I say, starts off pretty easy. Don't really take any take any damage. So let's actually, I'll show you what the combat's like. You can do this. What we'll do is we'll uh, beat it. Actually, no, I'll do a critical hit now. Well, almost. Set it does a sexy wiggle. Oh shit. And that's that dead. So we've done a death. And we got XP. Of course, as I say, you don't... Ah, oh, fuck. My first time around on this, I took bloody ages doing it. <laughs> right down to the bottom, then... Up, I think. Basically, I want to see what happens if we start doing a lot of killing. Which I realise isn't very good at testing... Showing you the the real meat of the game. But I'm doing this for myself. So we've done another death. And he apologises. The little Wimson. Or they apologise. We've just attacked something that didn't even want to fight. Horrible. It's terrible. We're bad. I deserve that because I'm a bad person. It's actually a really easy puzzle. But I, I forget things as soon as they're not in my field of vision. You know. Something like this. There we go. Pushy pushy. I mean, I've already fucked this file up. <laughs> um, I think what I do, what I might do is not save anything. I won't save, and then I can do what I want. Although the game, interestingly, will remember if you've closed the game without saving. Someone told me that they killed a, a, a character accidentally, and there's a character that mocks you for killing that character. Um, they felt guilty about killing the character, so closed the game, replayed it, avoided killing the character, and then the character that mocks you normally mocked them for closing the game and replaying for feeling guilty. It, it, I, I fucking love this game. So, again, just, just being a bit wantonly destructive here. Because last time I never really got XP for anything. Never leveled up or saw what that meant. There's just a, a lot to do here, and you can just keep replaying the game, and I feel like there's always a reward for doing that. There are so many different choices you can make as well. And it's not like the lip service moral choice, you know? Or the things that are really on the nose, like Bioshock. You know, I love Bioshock, but the, the choices really are very black and white. Do you want to do the awful thing or the not awful thing, you know? Whereas here it's like, the game really does, like Soma as well does that a bit, lets you make your own mind up as to what's good and bad. Which I like, you know, it's not... It treats you more, in, it takes, treats the player with some intelligence, you know? Not that this game is particularly subtle with some of its stuff, I mean the whole killing and no killing. Like the flower said, they shouldn't even have to tell you not to kill things. <laughs> So, but it's on the nose in all the right ways. There are other choices that are way more subtle than that. Especially when it gives you opportunities where it, it really does look like kill or be killed. And it's like, is there a, a non-murderous way out of this? Your love increased because you leveled up. Where were there, partner? He said you could push me around. The rock is talking. You're asking me to move over? Okay, just for you. So the rock moves. Not not much. You want me to move some more? Alrighty, how's this? Oh, look. The wrong direction. Think I got it. Again, like I said, fucks around with uh, convention. Not it. Ah, look at that. Stay there. You give me a real workout. There we go. It's easy to compare it to a game like Earthbound. You know, it's very... Very eccentric in its humour. She's been here quite a long time, it's stuck to the table. There's a mouse there. I said we won't save. Because I don't intend to keep any of this going. Are they gone yet? This keeps asking to you. Okay. Move it with force. It's a ghost. It was at this point that I was like, yeah, this soundtrack's fucking brilliant. So, some of the boss fight music is just great. I'm going to uh, eat some monster candy though, get our health back up. I'm fine, thanks, says the ghost, as it cries. Fucking 
brilliant music. So this is Napster Blue. And I said I can show you these things we can do with it. Check. This monster doesn't seem to have a sense of humour. Really not feeling up to it right now, sorry. Didn't attack because it didn't feel... Like I said, I mean... I, I think I'm actually in romantic love with this game. Genuinely. Let's flirt with it. I just weigh you down, it says, and then cries again. Napster Luke is wishing they weren't here. Let's uh, cheer for it. You gave Napster Luke a patient smile. Here. <laughs> so it's warming up a little bit. I say a lot of the fights, especially the more bossy uh, boss battle type ones, really do have a this odd strategy to them if you're going the pacifist route. So we'll try flirting this time. Oh no, it's still weighing us down. So still not feeling good enough about itself. We'll cheer again. You told Napster Bluke a little joke. Laughing some. And as you can see, the tears are a little thinner. Although it is tougher to avoid. Cheering seems to improve Napster Bluke's mood again. Now, I'll do, I'll do cheer again. Wants to show you something. Let me try. And it's crying upwards. It's made a hat. <laughs> do you like it? Napster Bluke eagerly awaits your response. So now we'll try the flirt. Oh no. I usually come to the ruins because there's nobody around, but today I met somebody nice. I'm rambling again. I'll get out of your way. Oh, So there you go. That's one example of uh, dealing with things in a pacifist way. Spider bake sale. All proceeds go to real spiders. Leave 7G in the web. Some spiders crawled down and gave you a donut. Leave 18G in the web. You didn't have enough gold. Oh, well. Oh, well. Now, you wouldn't even think something like that would have consequences later, but it does. There, Everything you do in the game could have some sort of brick joke or, or effect later. I heard using F4 can make you have a full screen. Oh, shit, I forgot about F4. I'm recording this in a little screen. Shit. Oh, well. It's all right. I'll just make it a little bit bigger in the video. So we're just being told about inventory here. We have a limited inventory, though that does expand later. There is just one switch. So what we've got to do is fall down these holes and try and find which one has the switch. It's that one up there. Although there does look like other things we can interact with. Like if we were to go down, I think, here. Oh, we'll fight first. We'll attack Mold's meal. Well, so when you fight multiple monsters, there is a lot more to avoid. Could have spared it, but like I said, I'm, I'm trying to do a balance between being horrible and being not horrible. And she's doing a little Mexican wave there. Milgup doesn't have a care in the world, so he already... already basically, I think the clues they give in speech bubbles, things like we are legion and stuff, um, means they're only effective when fighting with others. So once the other one's gone, you can just spare. The ghost again. I fell down a hole now, can't get up, go on without me. Wait, ghosts can fly, can't they? Oh well. <laughs> there you go. So we've got up here, there's the switch. Now there was also a... Is it in this hole? Yeah. Got a carrot here. Evil carrot, vegetoid, came out of the earth. Check. Serving size, one monster, not monitored by the USDA. Fresh morning taste. <laughs> oh, shit. You see, you know, some people say that I shit on indie devs, um, but I really don't. I just hold them to the same standard that I hold AAA devs to. Um, you know, for, for many years, I remember the years when independent developers were like, man, we don't get treated the same as AAA devs and we deserve to, there shouldn't be a distinction between indie and AAA, they should all just be games. You know, when Game of the Year awards came out, it was like, oh, they only ever give it to the big publisher ones, uh, the big AAA games. And I always tried to fight against that, so in my Game of the Year awards, you know, you'd see things like Ridiculous Fishing up there, 
right next to something on the same level as you know Metal Gear Solid 5 or whatever um, and I apply that to criticism as well as uh, praise so you know this is definitely one of my games of the year uh, alongside Bloodborne two totally different things um, I bring that up because uh, yesterday someone on a friend's Facebook a mutual um, friend of me and this other person were like really having a go at me at, uh, for um, shitting on AAA games to uh, no shitting on indie games for the entertainment of my audience and I'm like well no I, I shit on bad games mate them being indie being indie is not a fucking shield it's not a fucking little protective bubble that you get to be in um, so just pointing that out act dinner you pat your stomach, Vegetoid offers a healthy meal. And this is an interesting thing, because the the green things are healing items. Vegetoid's here for your health, and now it can be spared. And we will, because I don't want to fuck with no Vegetoid. It's funny though, because I've seen some criticisms of me recently, and it's like half the world says the I only ever shit on the low-hanging fruit of AAA games, and some say I only ever shit on the low-hanging fruit of indie games. Where's the fruit? Like, like where's the high fruit? And then it always comes down to the, the, the high-hanging fruit is just the particular indie games and the particular AAA games that they want me to attack. That's what it always comes down to. It's never, oh, you're shitting on the low-hanging fruit. It's you're shitting on the fruit that I like to eat or you're not shitting on the fruit that I find particularly dry and mealy. So I'm just finding that very interesting lately. Swing your arms baby, he says. So we could spare Migos, but doesn't have a care in the world, but we're gonna attack Migos. Being me is the best. He's not gonna attack at all. Here we are being really quite literally murderous. There we go. Like I say, I mean, I, I just honestly don't care. The far door is not an exit; it simply marks a rotation in perspective. You know, I don't care whether or not. I forget which switch it is. Whether or not you're AAA or indie. If you make shit and you're selling shit, I'm gonna call it shit. Or if it's brilliant, I'll call it brilliant. So. I'm gonna ask for some dinner. To do with the healing. Ah, fuck, missed it. Do it again. Eat your greens. Give me my. There we are. Give me my healthy carrot. Yum yum. Make sure I cackle softly. But we are gonna attack this vegetoid. Eight to your greens. Yeah. I want more dinner. Fuck. Ain't messing with no Vegetoid. Nothing happened. So that's just really getting us used to the idea of switches. If you can read this, press the blue switch. I think the blue switch is... There. Hidden switch. Look at that, cheeky bastards. If you can read this, press the red switch. There we go. They actually uh, put the easy one up first. Uh, put the easy one up last, rather. Green switch. Is it here? No. Oh. Trick. A naughty trick. It's alright. Just go around. Actually. You know, when it says about the switch in perspective, um, it is the same room from a different angle, so you can see where the switches are hidden behind the pillars. So we know the green switch is there. So I shouldn't have actually made that mistake. Because it's there. Sneaky little puzzle. Go up through here. Took longer than I thought it was. There's Toriel. 
How did you get here, my child? Are you hurt? There, there, I'll heal you. Should not have left you alone so long. I was irresponsible trying to surprise you like this. Well, I suppose I cannot hide it any longer. Come, small one. So there we go. Not saving again, because I don't want to record to keep any of this saved. At least saved in terms of um, progress. The game will remember what I've done. You have a nice time living here. So I will hold off on snail pie for tonight. I have another surprise for you. This is it. A room of your own. I hope you like it. Oh. So, she's off to see something burning. And there we are. An empty photo frame. It's really dusty. Knowing what I know about the game now, this, this bit is extra heartbreaking for me. But anyway, I think I'm going to leave it there because the rest of it goes into stuff that I really would... If, if you're interested in playing it, I feel you should experience it for yourself. Um, but this is Undertale. Um, every year the Jimquisition does its Jimquisition Awards, where I give five games a Game of the Year um, nod. Uh, there is going to be no surprise that this is one of them. Uh, I cannot stress that enough. Uh, go read the review on thejimquisition.com as well for, for more detail on, on what the game is and how brilliant it is. Um, there's a lot about it I can't talk about just because, again, it, it spoils nice surprises. Um, we've, we won't get far enough into the game, obviously, because we're stopping here, to date a skeleton, but you can date a skeleton, uh, which is obviously very important. Um, I, I, I just, I'm in love with this game. I think it's fucking fantastic, and I feel people should play it uh, a lot. So, yeah, when I, when I finally have free time of my own, um, I'm going to play through it again properly and, and try different things. Uh, I just feel like there's a lot of replay value. I'd love to see it come to something like the 3DS or, or you know, even the PS Vita for as long as that's alive. But if this could get on 3DS, I would be so happy. It, it might actually stop me playing Binding of Isaac for a bit, um, which I currently play on the PS4 and the 3DS at once because I'm a terribly addicted human being. But anyway, that's, that's a little slice of Undertale. Uh, one of the most, I mean, the word charming is really overused by games media, but it, it has its charm, and also a slight air of the unpleasant to it. And and I mean that not in terms of the game as a product being unpleasant, but there's something sinister under this game's surface, something eerie, something not quite right, uh, which, which again, I love. But anyway, I'm going to go now because I'm rambling a bit too much, um, but it is, it's, I can't express enough just how much this game really really gets me going so i'm off i will get going quite literally now and i'll see you later bye